Have you ever looked at a high-end portrait photo and thought, I wish I could recreate that? Well, today you're going to learn how to do it in Luminar Neo. We're going to take a deep dive into portraits, turning them from ordinary to extraordinary. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ben, Ben's Guide. Great that you could join us here today. Let's get right into the video and get started. Let's show you how to create these three high-end portrait looks. The first image we're going to use is this one. I'm going to click on that, press edit, and now we're going to be in the editing tab on Luminar Neo. What look are we trying to recreate? Well, let's have a look, shall we? I'm going to lower the opacity in the layer properties, and then you can see this image on the layer underneath. This is the image that we're going to try and recreate. In this image, we want to look at the differences to the image that we currently have. And then we want to remove the differences. And that's the way we're going to really look at editing the photo. Currently, the background is dark. It's got a bit of light in the middle. The actual color of the whole image is it's quite low saturation with the color. The only real saturation or hue that you can see in the color is the red, yellow, and orange of the skin tones. That's about it. Now we know that that's the color for this image, we need to get our original image looking like it. If I push up the opacity, here's the image that we'll be editing. I'm going to start with getting the color very similar. How I'm going to do that is see exactly what color is in this image. Coming down to the develop tab, and then going down to the color option, I'm going to push up the saturation and I can see that I've got my skin tones here, which are red, orange, and yellow, which you can see in the highlights here. And in the background, I've got a strong blue and cyan color. That's completely different to the image that we're trying to really create. Let's remove those out of this image. If I bring my saturation back down to zero, then I'm going to go off this tool and come into the color tool below. This tool has a HSL slider. What this does is it enables you to each color individually and then increase or lower the saturation or change the U of the color itself. We want to remove the saturation of the blue. I'm going to drag the blue down. We want to remove the saturation of the cyan. I'm going to drag that down. Now you can see in the background, we've got rid of those two colors which were different to the original image. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Next up, let's look at the overall exposure of the image. You can currently see that this image is brighter than the one underneath. And if you just want to check that, you can. Let's just lower the opacity. This is a lot darker than the image that we're currently working on. What are we going to do? This image has a vignette or a dark edge around it. I think they've created this using a vignette. Now I'm going to use that tool in Luminar Neo to try and replicate that look. I'm going to push the opacity up, come into the image here, and then let's find the vignette which you can see is here in the Essentials tab. Bringing the amount down, you can see how this is going to darken the edge of the image and create that look that we want. There we go. Now to make this blend in better, you can use the Feather option. If I push this up, this is going to blend the dark and light patches together. There we go. And I'm quite happy with the way that's looking right now. We've got the look on the outside similar, but currently we have all of the skin on the model, which is very bright and light. We don't want that because we just want the face to be bright to give that nice kind of light effect there. How are we gonna remove this light here? Well, first off, let's go for a global change, which we're going to lower the exposure of the whole image to get it down to a lower base level. When we've done that, we're gonna do the same again, but this time lowering the exposure we're only going to make this effect visible on the shoulders and the collarbone area of the model. The other for this is because we want to take the attention away from this part of the model's body. If I just drag this, you can see that the red area is revealing where the effect is going to be. If I just add, in fact, let's bring this down slightly. I'll do it here. And we want really the effect to kind of end close to the chin. That's just going to give us the lighter area in the face. So if I click on adjustments now, there you go. You can see that we've darkened down this area of the model. And just to check that, let's click on the eye. You can see that's actually worked really nicely. 
Now we don't want to go too dark here because then you're going to get these edges looking really dark and that's going to bring in a bit of a problem that we'd need to fix. Where it is at the moment, I'm quite happy with, but we definitely need to add more light to the face to really make that stand out. I'm going to use one of Luminar Neo's recent additions, which is the Studio Light Tool. I'm going to click on that. What this does is it enables you to add light like you would with a studio light in a studio, but actually just to put the light in different areas. Let me show you what I mean. Now we've selected studio light, I only have to hover over the image and you can see this round circle in white. Wherever I drag this around and then push up the amount slider, it's going to introduce light. Now, as you can see, it does it in that area and it does it just a little bit further out as well. Now, I only want it on the face really, and maybe a little bit of this hat here, just to lighten that, but nowhere else. Let's push up the amount slider, kind of see where it's affecting first. We can see that it's affecting the face and a bit too much of the hat there for my liking. There we go, that's better around about there. Just lowering this circle, you can see that it's more on the face now. And you have a few different options that you can change. You've got smoothness, which we don't really need to change. But one thing I will say about smoothness is don't go too low, too high with it. You start getting crazy effects. It's best to keep it kind of in the middle or in the low end around about here. And then depth is one which plays a big part as well. If I lower the depth, you can see that it kind of gives a less intense look, which then lightens it less or if you kind of push it up, you get more of an intense look, as you can see. So I'm gonna push it round about there, and I'm actually really quite happy with the way that looks now. Overall, the image is pretty much where I want it to be, but I have noticed that in the image that we're trying to recreate, the face really pops, and the main for that is not just the light, but is how sharp the lips are and the face area is. So we do need to recreate a bit of sharpness in the face to really make it pop and stand out of the photo. But let's do that quickly. One tool which I think will take care of this job really well will be the Super Sharp AI tool. It has inside it a face enhancer. Now if you take this, make sure it's on universal and then just ensure that my opacity is up but I have still got the image underneath. If we go back onto Super Sharp, click the face enhancer and then you can see that we've got universal we only need to add low just to start with to see how it looks. I'm going to click low effect. It's going to do its loading thing. And there we go. We've now got an image which is definitely sharper in the lip area. Let's just take a close up look. You can see, you can see these lips have texture and there's the face, which just makes the face stand out a little bit more on top of the light that's been added. So I'm really quite pleased with the image and the result we've got here. But this is not where we're going to stop. I'm going to show you how to create really nice other effects too. But let's jump back into the catalog section. Let's go to this image right here. And you can make a real difference to an image like this in a really short amount of time. I really like this effect. It's modern, it's cool, and you can add a really strong, vibrant, neon duotone color. That's quite a mouthful, but you'll see exactly what this looks like and just how easy it is to recreate. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna find the toning option, which is under the creative section here, click on toning, and I'm going to push up the saturation. Now I'm gonna push it all the way up to 100. You might think that's that looks terrible. It may not look great right now, but wait to see how it looks. Now I'm gonna choose hue or the color of this, to do that, I'm going to just slide along until I get just a bit more like a magenta or a red. Like, that's quite nice. Now, finally, to really make this stand out even more, I'm going to bring down the balance and watch what happens. It just really intensifies the whole overall look and colour. Now, this looks a bit wacky at the moment. How we're going to edit this is we're going to use a mask. And the mask is just going to make it visible in the area of the image that we want it. Using the linear gradient in the masking section, I'm gonna just draw across this image. You can see this red area being shown, and this is just showing you where the effect is going to be. I think about halfway down the face is quite nice, maybe a little bit more across. It's about where the nose is. 
And now let's look at how this is. You can see that we've got the effect coming from the right hand side, blending into the model's face, and we've got the color on the one side the way we want it. Next up, we're gonna go into toning again. We're gonna go into saturation, push that right up to 100, and then find the color that we want in the U. I'm gonna go for, which is a bit more like a blue or a cyan. Can't see the color too well at the moment, so I'm gonna push up the amount slider. There we go. Let's bring the U to more of a cyan color, about there, and then bring the balance down to really make this color pop. Fantastic. Now, once again, let's just bring this effect where we want it with the masking tool. Let's get linear gradient, draw over from the left hand side this time, and then bring it across to this time where her cheek is, and then click adjustments. And there we go. You can now see we've got this really quite stunning effect, this duo tone neon look with the model. You've got this beautiful magenta from the right, and then it's kind of blending in with this cyan from the left. The third and final look that we're gonna create in the video is the really cool one. I'm just gonna choose this image, click on edit, and let's take a look at the image that we're gonna recreate. This is the top image, the one that we're gonna be changing, but underneath, when we drag down the opacity, you can see the image that we're gonna recreate. You've got this beautiful silhouette image where the light is pouring through the window, through the blinds, creating that strong contrast between the highlights and the shadows on her face. It's a lot darker than the image that we currently have. So we're gonna to have to make a few changes. First off, we've got blue in this picture and we want it to be more of an orange color to add that really nice golden glow. The way I'm gonna do that in this image is a little bit different. And this is gonna show you a different technique to use. Clicking off layer properties, I'm gonna come down to develop and then I'm gonna come down into the color section and develop and choose saturation. Now I'm gonna bring the saturation nearly all the way down. You might wonder why, but you will see as this goes on in a minute, exactly why this is gonna be this way. We've got no color in the image pretty much now and we're taking it back to a base level. If I now go off the saturation, I really wanna concentrate now on getting the light and the exposure in the image correct. I'm gonna do that by darkening down certain parts of the image. First off though, let's go for an exposure in a global way over the whole image and bring that all the way down. That's got the overall color a bit close to where we want it. If we do it again, this time we can the effect with the mask. I bring this down again, jump into the mask, grab a linear gradient, and then we're just gonna drag this across from the back. And this is going to make behind her darker. And that's because there's empty space there and we don't want to draw the viewer's attention to that area. Let's have a look at the adjustments. And there we go, it's darkened it down there. Your eye's not really drawn to that part anymore. And that's what we want. Finally, we'll do this a third time, bring the exposure down again. This time we're gonna grab the mask, linear gradient, and we're gonna introduce it to this corner. And this is where we can darken the corner of the blinds because we just want the attention on the face and the blinds right by your hand. Let's leave it there. And as you can see, the main light is now here and here. And this is what we want. Finally, we really want to introduce light to the face because it's a little bit dark and it's just not standing out like it should do. I'm gonna go off develop and I'm gonna go into another tool which is quite new and that's called Studio Light. This is a great little tool actually that you can use to really kind of change the look of light in your images. Now I've selected this. When I go onto the image, I will find this white circle and I can move this around anywhere. But the purpose of this circle is to put it where you want the light to show. And that will be made visible now I push up the amount slider. You can see that because the circle is in this area, it's now lighting up the face. So the light is coming all around this area here. Now that looks a lot better already but we want to create that silhouette look, don't we? And we're not gonna do that just with this effect. We have to customize the light inside the Studio Light tool. Now I've selected that and it's on, I have this pattern here, which is strips, and you can see that it's adding more of a strip light effect to the face. But we want to take this to the next level. 
If I grab the scale down, you can see that that creates more of these strip lights in her face and then replicates more of the look of the amount of blinds that we have here. But the overall look of it is still not right. We need to now change the position so that it matches more realistically on the model's face. And I think around about there is looking quite good. The final change to this strip like effect is to bring the depth up. And this is going to make more contrast stand out between the darker areas and the lighter areas in the strip light. Let's just push this up and you'll see what I mean. You can see how that stands out and is now a lot more punchy. That's brilliant. I'm actually really happy with the look of this image, but we do need to color it because you might be thinking, well, it looks good, Ben, but it's black and white. And you'd be right. Well, let me show you now why I went black and white. If I would have left the color in the image, then we would have had a problem. We would have had too many colors that we were trying to blend together. By making this decision at the start and just taking all the color out, I can now just add in that golden glow and nothing else. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm actually going to use a way which I don't normally do, and that's to use color harmony. Color harmony is very good for adding in a golden glow effect. If I push up the warmth and just increase the warmth in the image, adding a bit of brilliance into this will make the color of it pop more. And we're starting to get a little bit closer to the kind of color that we want. But we're still not there yet. We need to start using some of these other options. Split color warmth. If we push the warmth up, you'll see how that's going to push even more warmth into the image. And we're really close now. We're just not far away from finishing this effect off. But you can see we've got this lovely overall kind of golden effect in the image. But if we just top this off with color balance by adding a little bit of yellow and red into the shadows. Let's just bring the yellow down a little bit. It's a bit too strong an effect. You can see that we're really now just evening out the whole image of that gorgeous night glow or morning golden glow. And I'm actually really happy with the way this is looking now. Now you can mess around with these sliders to get the image changed color wise if you want to, but I think where it's at, I'm pretty happy. Guys, I hope you've really enjoyed this video and you can see how easy it is to create one of these really kind of iconic effects that you see in portrait photography. If you've enjoyed the video, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And, you know, if you want to, you can go ahead and use the link down in the description area to save yourself 31% on Luminar Neo if you're in the market for this. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Have a great day, whatever you do, and I'll see you in the next video.